Sinfo gear. Sinfo gear. Sinfo gear. Sinfo gear. You know, despite Maho Shoujo scaling starting to be my thing, there was a point where I actually rarely watched Maho Shoujo series. Even though when I was a young lad I idolized the Powerpuff Girls, the fact that I was a male, series with fighting cute girls and giant robots were basically a goldmine for my little pea-sized brain. So series like Outlaw Star, Rosario Vampire, and Code Geass were some of my all-time favorite shows. However, the advent of Dark Maho Shoujo ended up sparking a new neuron in my brain, adding one more to the elusive two, and as such, Maho Shoujo became the wave. With this newfound appreciation, I mainly got into darker Maho Shoujo series like Magical Girl Sight and Magical Girl Raising Project, but there was one show I always thought looked cool, but never got into, with that being Senki Zesho, Simpho Gear. I had always seen various clips and scenes from the series, and as much as I would love to try and dissect the themes of the series as well as its characters, more specifically Subasa, Chris, and Maria, the only other brain cell rattling on in my head said, Oh my god, they blew up a city, you gotta scale up! And surprisingly... The scaling is actually really interesting here. So, after experiencing Sinful Gear for the first time, as well as seeing an anniversary project on the horizon, I decided to go through and dissect our characters' powers and feats by the only way I know best by seeing if they can beat Goku. That being said, Biki is our primary target here for this course, though I'm sure I'll go over the other five eventually. No, I've said eventually a lot. Maybe I should start committing to those. Nah, never that. But Hibiki is the first one to go over, so obviously there will be spoilers for all the way up to the latest series, XV, and let's get started before I start rambling on about how cool Mecha Musume are. The scaling of Hibiki actually isn't that hard to go over. In actuality, Simple Gear scaling is the most grounded and consistent compared to every other Maho Shoujo series I've at least looked into scaling at this point. Despite it at the end of the day being a Maho Shoujo series, there aren't any issues of unexplained abilities or just wild feats or statements that can flip the scaling on its head or that are really hard to explain. Thankfully, we don't have to go over another Lambda incident. Instead, the scaling for the series turned out to be surprisingly consistent throughout the arcs, even going so far as to backtrack at times to make the scaling more consistent, as it predicates itself more on feats rather than the rest of the genre that just goes, Man, they're the strongest people we've ever faced. Or, We've never dealt with something like this before. For example, in XV, Hibiki and the others go to fight against Noble Red, a group of remnant alchemists that appeared after the fallout of Adam and the Bavarian Illuminati. Despite fighting Saint Germain, Cagliostro, and Prelati, the Simple Gear users state that Saint Germain and the others were apparently tougher than Noble Red, but they were struggling against Vanessa since they no longer had the Ignite module, which Noble Red decided to take advantage of. Despite this, Hibiki is able to fight all three at once with a transformation that's the equivalent of a fusion between a Simple Gear and a Faust robe called Amalgam. It just goes to show how the scaling can be for the series, and I love it for that. So they really took their time in showing the scaling of the series and the various different aspects that you could take with it. That being said, Hibiki is kind of nuts, though compared to the juggernauts of Maho Shoujo, she isn't as crazy as reality warpers. Starting off with strength, Hibiki in base is able to fight against the coffin containing a complete relic and a custodian alongside the other 5 Simpho Gear users, and while this doesn't seem crazy by itself as it is basically a 6v1, the reason this is crazy is because of the fact that Adam Weisfeld, the controlling director of the Bavarian Illuminati that was able to clear Saint Germain up until Hibiki got into the fight, stated that he needed divine power to fulfill the next step in his plan, which would be to destroy the coffin and take the relic which is confirmed within the following season. This would mean that the six Sinful Gear users should scale up to the divine power they witnessed in AXV, which would be drastically above the noise that Saint Germain used to seal off space and create pocket dimensions with their own planets, stars, and nebulas that the group was able to defeat in base as well, which is also consistent with them fighting against the divine baby, with their only caveat being that they couldn't land a decisive blow due to the way the divine energy worked. Not only that, but their fight with Adam also greatly increased their scaling since during this fight with him, the users got an X drive level amp from using the S2CA hexa conversion by burning the magical sword Dyneslave, 
which is confirmed by the site itself. Following this, Hibiki would gain the form of Amalgam, a form that is stated by Elf-9 to be a fusion between a simple gear and a false robe, with a false robe being a power increase equivalent to, or depending on how you look at it, even above a regular simple gear's amp, as Saint Germain and her group were able to utterly destroy the simple gear users after taking away their ignite, requiring them all to learn unison to fight them, as well as being stated verbatim to be stronger than a simple gear. With this transformation, Hibiki survives an attack from Daedalus End, a combination attack from all three of Noble Red in the form of a giant labyrinth that is over 380,000 kilometers long that can exponentially multiply the energy released for their attack, not only being stated to be their strongest attack, but also going so far as to even allow pre Shemha and Noble Red to destroy the entire labyrinth just by going full throttle. They would later go on to fight against amped versions of Noble Red, courtesy of Shemha, with this amp being strong enough to completely overpower the base Sifu Gear users by themselves while in 2v1s, forcing them to use Amalgam and Unison again to combat them. Following this, the Six would later fight against Shemha, their strongest foe to date, being someone who Carol struggled with in base with her false robe with Dardabla. What a name, dude. What a name. With this Carol's power being equivalent to multiple X drives worth all the way back in GX while nerfed, and potentially even being higher considering she was able to give 5 of the 6 Sinful Gear users X drive after they failed to activate the Chateau de Tafage with their climax songs, on top of being someone who in GX the Sinful Gear users thought they only could be once they achieved X drive. With this Shemha being a Shemha who prior to the fight stated her power was less than 1 ten thousandth of a single percentage of her power after being awakened, which is not only well because she basically farted on Carol after transforming into a Faust robe that was meant to restrain her, but this same transformed Shemha was able to fight off an Amped Carol alongside six other Sinful Gear users with Burning X Drive, with X Drive being a multiplier that is upwards of billions of times, and this is on top of the increase of Amalgam as X Drive does stack on top of whatever is currently released as stated by the website. While strength feats are very prevalent in Sympho Gear, like most other series, there is a lack amount of speed feats that leaves scaling in a bit of a pickle. However, thankfully most speed feats come from Hibiki anyway, so it doesn't really matter. With Hibiki speed, we can at the very least by mid to NG put her around the tier of light speed due to her and the other Sympho Gear users fighting against a mind controlled Miku. With Miku using a Sinful Gear for a relic named Shen Shoujing, though with multipliers and scaling upwards, she does end up getting much faster, as Ignite is stated to buff all stats rather than just strength, and Amalgam is stated to be comparative to Ignite. Starting from this battle, Hibiki is not only able to dodge attacks from Miku, but is also able to intercept attacks while hindered by the growing relic in her body and on a time limit, with Hibiki even stating that at the start of the fight, she felt like she was going to overheat due to the energy emitted. With the Shen Shoujing being a relic that is constantly referred to as a mirror being stated to reflect light on multiple occasions and its attacks also directly stating to be referencing a mirror to reflect light. I mean, come on, the attack is literally called Flash of Light. I don't know what more you want me to say. This speed scaling is also assisted with Chris, who is able to tag Miku and dodge Flash of Light from literally right in front of her, but in a previous arc was able to fly into space and block an attack from the Kadinger, which is a tower created to destroy the moon. And this Hibiki not only scales above that Chris in the second arc, but it's also relative to Tsubasa, who's able to maintain the speed by running away from this light. Following this, Hibiki would end up surpassing this multiple times over, as the user would be able to speed blitz Carol after getting Ignite when Carol was blocking every other attack prior to her transformation, and being able to defeat the same Alkanoids that created the pocket dimension in base after requiring Ignite to be during its first encounter. This base Hibiki scaling is also supported by Hibiki being able to fight alongside Saint Germain, who was already fighting against an Ignite amped Hibiki and Kirika at the same time. And with Hibiki surpassing her Ignite amps multiple times over at the start of XV in base, her speed should be at the very least around 10,000 times the speed of light in base, though depending on where you want to go by the scaling at the end of AXV, it could be upwards of 35 billion times faster than light, but that is ultimately up to what you think is a good interpretation of it, as this series does have a lot to do with its scaling and, like I said, the different aspects of it. I think my favorite part of Simple Gear scaling is the actual transformations and techniques, since they don't ever seem to be outdated for whatever reason, each having their own upsides and drawbacks rather than being something that isn't constantly used. An example to start off would be Armed Gears, as despite being something that kind of fell out of name early on, was still something to acknowledge, as it was something that people were surprised about when it came to Hibiki as early season 1. Hibiki is considered of half of a fighter, and after she gets her Armed Gear in G, Mario refers to her as a monster and wonders how they would be able to combat 
combat them. And while you can interpret that as all three of the users being Chris, Tsubasa, and Hibiki, she had already fought against Tsubasa and Kiriko was handling Chris just fine, while Hibiki was the only one not really fighting against Shirabe. Now the reason I bring up Armed Gears first is because a lot of people have the misconception that it's simply just a weapon that's used and not actually an increase in power, however this couldn't be further from the truth, as even the website's glossary heavily implies that not having an Armed Gear makes one much less of a fighter than one without. A lot of people take this as more of a narrative thing and dismiss it due to the frequency of their usage which is understandable, but we'd follow that up by getting statements like Tsubasa telling the users to funnel their X-Drive power through their arm gears to strike the Lion Mech from Carol, implying even further that it isn't just a weapon but an amp in strength. But while it is an increase in strength, we don't get an exact reference as to how much of an increase it is. As when Chris fights Hibiki in the Nehushtan armor, Chris is surprised that Hibiki is attempting to manifest an arm gear in such a short amount of time, and even compares the energy used to make that arm gear to Tsubasa's climax song. However, Chris's statement is actually a very large low ball due to the Symphony Gear website and its keywords page. Oh. Now you've heard me talk about this glossary or website or whatever and you're probably wondering what I am talking about. You see with each season of Sinful Gear there is a website made as promotional material. However the thing about these sites is that these sites have a glossary for keywords which are just explanations of specific pieces or information or events and for scaling this is a gold mine. You know assuming you can read Japanese or whatever but thank god for Google Translate. In these types of instances the site acts as a data book or a guidebook for many things and Hibiki's lack of arm gear is one of them. As in the section for Hibiki's armed unit in the first season site, it states that even though Chris stated that Hibiki's punch is close to Tsubasa's climax song, Hibiki's punch actually had energy equivalent to several, which is surprising because of what we'll go over later. This is also supported further by G's site stating that armed gears amplify the output of a gear's phonic gain, and even if you don't go off of that, we have evidence of Tsubasa even being surprised that when she fought against Mari at the start of G, she was shocked to learn that Mari was strong fighting even without an armed gear. So it's safe to say that it is an amp in power, but as for how much stronger it makes a user, we can't really put a number on it, but not mentioning it would do a disservice to the arsenal Sinful Gear users have. Hibiki does later get an armed gear rather than just an armed unit, but just like mentioned before, we don't have a direct amount by how much stronger she gets. However, for other transformations in amps, this is much different, starting off with Climax Songs. Climax Songs would be the first real multiplier to talk about, mainly because they came first within the series and are the easiest to put a real calc on. When Tsubasa fights against Mario for the first time, Nastasia states that Mario needed to push Tsubasa to unleash Morphonic Gain to awaken the Nephilim, a relic that devours other relics that had been reset by Sedona. During this exchange, we do see Tsubasa's current Phonic Gain, which is only at 22%, which surprises Mario to learn that she's so strong only at 22%. The Nephilim is eventually awakened, however this is only after after four other Sinful Gear users appear, and three out of the six leave, leaving the last three to use the S2CA to defeat the noise in the stadium. Now you can look at this in a multitude of different ways, but the most consistent way to look at it is that Climax songs are around a three to five times increase in power. This is consistent for a few reasons, with the main reason being that Nastasia believes that Maria and Tsubasa would be able to awaken the Nephilim by themselves. And while the G-Stite states that the S2CA was the one that had awakened the Nephilim, it was heavily implied that Nastasia truly believed that Tsubasa would have reached his level of power in the fight with Maria or be somewhere close to it, which is confirmed with the S2CA being stated to replicate the power that they displayed in the Fallen Moon incident, which was only previously done in their X-Drive forms. However, Hibiki's climax song might be just a bit stronger than 5 times, or rather the amount she can increase to would be higher. In that same fight in G, Hibiki alongside Chris and Tsubasa utilized the S2CA Tri-Burst, which is a technique that uses Hibiki's arm gear to amplify another person's climax song, but diverging all the strain onto herself, which she uses on both Tsubasa and Chris to massively increase their climax song's power. After this, Hibiki is completely fine, only phased by narrative complications mentally, and she is later able to do this alongside Maria, Shirabe, and Kirika with Hexa Conversion after losing her fusion status. So upscaling from there, it is very possible that Hibiki's climax song could range from anywhere from 5 times upwards of 30 times of an amp depending on how you look at it but it is just safe to keep it around that 3 to 5 times mark since it only really diverges the strain onto herself and we don't even completely know if she can amp her own strength with her armed gear as well as her phonic gain. There is an argument that Climax songs do increase more than just AP and increase all stats, but often it does just result in a burst in power by other characters like Elf 9. But in the Sinful Gear manga, which is an adaptation of the first season, Tsubasa does use her climax song to amp her speed as well, as stated by Fine. But the credibility of the manga does come into question depending on who you ask, as some plotlines diverge and events happen differently. 
but the story is still written by Akifumi Kaneko, the same man who has been behind the entire Simple Gear anime story and direction, so that would mean that this can be considered somewhat consistent alongside the statement on the G side of Climax songs being unique to each gear. Another misconception is that Climax songs aren't really a multiplier since Climax songs are sort of implied to have a set maximum, seeing as how the website for the first anime's keywords state that Hibiki's arm unit punches Chris with the equivalent of several Climax songs, as well as Carol stating that her singing was equivalent to 7 billion Climax songs. However, Climax songs are stated to amplify a user's phonic gain, not just removing the limiters on the Sinfu gear, thus further supporting them to be multipliers rather than just set increases. This is also consistent with Hibiki using her Climax song while using X-Drive at the end of the first season, implying that this would amplify her strength rather than increasing it to a set amount. Unless you believe that, like, the X-Drive in the first season is weaker than a Climax song, and in which case, I, I don't know what to say to you aside from the fact you're goofy. Since that would make the later statements of X-Drive being considered a miracle and being the strongest tool they have, being a bit... eh? On top of her climax song, she also has the ability of Amalgam. Now, we would have been going over Ignite first, but not only does Hibiki not have Ignite anymore, but in order to go over Amalgam, we need some level of Ignite scaling, so we'd basically be going over both at once anyways. I'll go over Ignite a bit more in depth when I eventually make the History of Hibiki Tachibana video, because lord knows I love the series too much to not do a video like that, but just to go over current Hibiki, we just need a bit of Ignite scaling to get a number on Amalgam. During the battle against Carol and the auto scorers, we end up getting a good gauge of exactly where Ignite should be as a multiplier, as Elf 9 goes over the different functions of Simpho Gears before following through with Project Ignite. As they state that Climax songs are ultimately just an overwhelming amount of power that isn't that useful in close combat and isn't guaranteed to work, while X-Drive, the ultimate form for the gears, need a massive amount of phonic gain to activate and is often considered a miracle. For reference of exactly how much a massive amount is, while end of season 1 only ranges from a group of around 20 to 30-ish people, later seasons like G, X, and later XV would end up providing us with a range upwards of an entire planet's worth. This gives us a general estimate of what we're working with, a power above 5 times, but below X-Drive which is a vastly higher multiplier, and while that does seem like a wide range, it actually gets us right where we need to be, as once they use Ignite they are able to fold Carol easily while she was not singing, while Carol actually required singing on the second encounter with Ignite. What's more is that they never use a Climax song when they had access to Ignite, aside from Kirika but she's a bit which meant that Ignite was basically all but confirmed to be stronger than a Climax song. Now the reason I bring this up is because when Noble Red goes to fight against the users, they state that they were waiting for the users to not have access to Ignite to fight them, despite having ability that forced Carol to sing in the form of Daedalus End, an attack stated to be their strongest attack and contain their combined power. On top of that, even after amps from Shemha that allowed them to overwhelm all the Sinful Gear users using Unison casually, Amalgam allowed them to catch up to that monumental increase in strength. So to put a number to it, Amalgam is around a thousand times amp and increase, as Ignite's three levels are each another Ignite amp on top of themselves, and Amalgam is around the same strength if not higher than Ignite. There is an argument that Amalgam is actually weaker than Ignite, and this is most predicated on XV's site explanation about Amalgam, which states that the form actually has two modes being Cocoon and Imago, each of these being more focused on one area, with Cocoon being defensive and Imago being offensive, with low support for the other side. But that's more leaning towards them having a different mode for attack and defense, whereas Ignite just encompasses is both, but was stuck on a time limit. On top of that, it's also stated that it was considered to be an alternative to Ignite, not outright better or stronger like most series push with new transformations, so it's all up to interpretation, but it does make more sense to say they are relative to each other. Side note, the Simple Gear wiki does state that Carol's usage of phonic gain through her Faust robe increases her power by orders of magnitude, which further supports this Ignite being 10 times multiplier argument, but we don't ever get to really see a source for this, believe me, I tried to find one, so I decided against using that line of text until I find a source for that. They most likely got that from the Ignite multipliers inherently, but trying to bounce it off the other way around and scaling Ignite off of Carol just doesn't provide that much. Plus there's already enough evidence to go over that it's around 10 times or more anyways. X-Drive is the most powerful tool in Hibiki's arsenal, even going so far as to have an upgraded version of it in the final episode of XV in the form of Burning X-Drive. Thankfully, we do have some sort of gauge to place X-Drive's insane scale to, starting with Carol's scale. Scaling. Carol, as I have mentioned before, is an adversary that the Sinful Gear users face that is so powerful that her regular singing is equivalent to 7 billion Climax songs at once. Allowing her to combat and completely obliterate 3 Rubetto level Ignite and Sinful Gear users at one time 
without transforming into the Lion Mech with Dirtabla. After utilizing her arm gear in S2CA Hexa Conversion, Hibiki is able to divert Carol's Phonic Gain to her and the five other users, allowing them all to obtain X-Drive and fight Carol on even ground. Now, while I would like to say that this is certainly not correct and is clearly exaggerated since 7 billion 5 times amps sound outrageous, the site also confirms this and Carol does later perform the same feat again on her own without being nerfed by any rejections to give everyone X drive atop the Chateau de Tafage, which is only able to be activated by Carol initially. So, as an exact number, we will put X drive at around a 35 billion times multiplier seeing as how they were able to attack Shemha, which is a struggle for even an amped Carol. And even though this is a bit absurd, the fact that the users say that they're only able to stand a chance against Carol even though they had Ignite, X-Drive was strong enough to allow them to fight against Carol on even ground was astonishing. On top of that, the math itself is also quite consistent as they do state that Carol is similar to a miniature sun when she's about to explode with the giant lion mecha, which is from the small planet level that we saw the Simple Gear users end on in G, which is around 15 quetatons of energy, which which is enough to be small star level. However, the even crazier part is the fact that it is just stated that X Drive stacks on top of whatever the user is currently on, so X Drive amps are also indicated with being a multiplier higher than Amalgam. There are ways just to say that it massively scales above 35 billion times, but that is ultimately depending on what you believe was the outcome of the fight with the Nephilim, as with their combined power they were able to blow a hole through the Nephilim whose self-destruction stated that it heavily damaged the treasury of Babylon, with the treasury of Babylon being stated to be of infinite size and Genjiro even believed that it was destroyed entirely from the explosion, hence why we no longer see regular noise and only alkanoids that are created by the alchemists. So if you do go off of this feat and these statements, it could be that X-Drive could be enough of a multiplier to get a moon level combatant to Universal Plus, but otherwise that is where it lies since the users believe that only after activating X-Drive they could fight Carol in her Faust Road. Another ability Hibiki has alongside every other Symphal Gear user is Unison, which allows Symphal Gear users to increase their power tremendously by singing together. Now as much as I would like to call this a, oh my gosh, just two dudes jumping somebody, this will be proven to be much different as Kirika and Shirabe, two Symphal Gear users who are much weaker than all their other partners, utilize Unison and they're able to tag Alchemists and auto scores that are much stronger than them without the need for Ignite. And while this is because of the fact that their two relics simply work together, the other users do have a version of Mock Unison. As for exactly how much of an increase Unison is, it is heavily implied that Unison is an increase nearing the levels of Ignite, as Genjiro states that Unison would be a heavy factor in their combat without Ignite against the Alchemist, and Kirika and Shirabe's Unison was able to heavily damage Prelati and a false throw by themselves. Which is also assisted by the site for Unison stating that individually the two are much weaker than any of their contemporaries, but when utilizing it they are the strongest out of any of the Symphogear Gear users. However, it does go on to state that that this mock unison for the other users doesn't come close to the strength of Shirabe and Kirika, which is another video topic for another time, but for now, just know that unison is at the very least for the others, an amp that is around the Greta Ignite for Hibiki. Following this, another hack she has access to is her arm gear, which can amp the phonic gain of anything she comes into contact with. This also extends to not only amping it, but being able to convert energy to her own, as she's able to take the song from a nerfed Carol and convert it into power for an X drive, with Mario only assisting and giving it to every other Symphal Gear user with her power Power diversion. While some people will go to say that she can only convert Phonic Gain, which is mostly true, she is able to do this with the energy to mix up a Faust Robe, which is stated by Song to not be made of the same energy only to offload the amount onto Dyneslave with the help of Elf 9. I did go over arm gears already, but I didn't really go over Hibiki's arm gear, just mainly using it as a reference to show exactly what can be contentious for this series as a whole. As for individual hacks aside from generic super strength, speed, things along that nature, there is one really goofy thing that Hibiki has, and that is the simple gear itself, Gungnir. For those who don't know what I'm alluding to, Gungnir is a philosophical armament, which is a weapon that attacks based on concepts as well as physical forms, and yes, it is as broken as it sounds. In Gungnir's case, Gungnir has the ability to cancel out the abilities of and destroy anything that can be considered divine, which is insane considering that this works on just the internalization on the concept of divinity. This way of attacking concept is also confirmed by another philosophical weapon used by one of Carol's auto scorers, Sphera, whose weapon has the ability of sword break, which destroys anything that can be considered or recognized as a sword, which she uses not only to fight against Tsubasa and Maria and GX, 
but is also able to completely destroy Vanessa's hand, which is considered to be a blade in the sight, as well as looking like a blade if you squint really, really closely. With this, Gungnir stated that it attacks a target on all parallel worlds at the same time, which is a key point when the beings from the alchemists are unable to stop themselves from taking damage and sacrificing that over to their alternatives in parallel dimensions. Limbo clones are shaking in their boots right now. So with Biki being able to destroy anything that could be considered divine or godly, it really gives essence to the name God Killer. Aside from that, all the other hacks would just be things like super strength, speed, limited flight with her base form but real flight in her x drive form, resistance to atomic manipulation with the Sympho gear as noise are able to turn people into carbon dust, while alkanoids are able to turn people into prime materia which is the basic building block of all matter in the Sympho gear verse, having some level of resistance to purification as well as having some access to purification properties via the philosopher's stone being built into the Sympho gear, which is stated to be able to cure anything impure as when St. Germain and the others of the Bavarian Illuminati are able to completely counter ignite by it being considered an impure ability due to the origin of Dinesleaf, a sword stated to always draw blood whenever it is drawn. Thanks for watching, I really enjoyed making this one, not only because Simple Gear is probably one of the coolest Maho Shoujo series out there aesthetically, but it was also just something I really wanted to get into for a very, very long time. After all, two of my favorite things in this world are Maho Shoujo and Mecha, so having two of those being a central concept, as well as a unique power system like Fauna Gain, and some cool characters makes me want to go over this even more. Because of how much I enjoy this series, there will be some more scaling for some other characters later down the line, with even some hypotheticals brewing before the anniversary project. At least I hope it's before that. I would also really like to do a really big breakdown of Biki as a whole, as her power progression is quite interesting, and this video was sort of just a quick breakdown rather than a comprehensive guide to every fight she's ever had. Therefore, going over her as a whole with each individual event and season would be pretty cool, even if it would be really long. That being said, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, or leave a fast steamy dislike if you hate everything involving Maho Shoujo and Mecha and call me a 12 year old in the comments. And as always, ciao. あ、違うね。もう、もう。今ここで限界を超えろ。それしか道はねえ。俺たち金色の妖怪だ。修羅場王国最強の魔法師だ。<音声><音声>